Hello, my name is Will, and I'm going to walk you through how you can use Python in Kestro to build powerful flows. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can actually run your Python code in Kestra. The first way you can do that is using the Python scripts plugin. So we can see here that in this task, we're using the Python scripts plugin as our type, and it is all of our Python code is actually written in line in the YAML. So this is super useful if you want to be able to just, you know, run a couple of lines of Python without the hassle of creating a separate file, having it all in one place. So this example here, as you can see, is going to make a request to Docker Hub to get the number of downloads for the Kestra image, and then it's going to print that out to the terminal. So if I press execute now, we can sit here and watch the output generate. And this is super useful for being able to, you know, tap into the power of Python directly into Kestra. So yeah, there we go. We can see our output. Let's say you've got an example where you don't want to write your Python in Kestra. You've already got it in a separate file. Maybe it's in version control. Well, that's where the Python commands plugin comes in very helpful. So exact same example here, but instead of writing the code in here, we're running a command to call our Python file like you would in the terminal. So instead, uh, we have to obviously get our code into Kestra. So the best way to do that is making sure that we've got namespace files set to enabled. This means that we can, our flow will be able to access the files in the editor. This is important because otherwise it won't be able to call the Python file. Uh, so if I click over to editor, we can see that we've got uh, an example code here called pythoncode.py. And as you can see, it's the same as in the script example, but it's in its own separate file. So if we head back over there, we can press execute and it's going to execute our code as we would expect. And we'll get the same output as before. There's the number of downloads. Wonderful. Now that's useful and all, but wouldn't it be great if we could access that value and pass it on to later tasks downstream and be able to see it in our outputs uh, tab? Now you can do that with the Kestra Python library. So if we head over to flows and go to Python outputs, as you can see here, uh, I'm going to be using the commands library again to uh, the commands plugin to call a Python file. And this Python file is going to hand our variable downloads back to Kestra so we can then use it in a log here, but also see it in the outputs tab. So there's benefits to both. Now let's have a look at our outputs metric code. Um, in here, we're importing the Kestra library. And then simply, we just hand over a dictionary uh, to this function called outputs. And so we can then access our variable in Kestra by just doing calling downloads, but we can call this whatever we like, and that will give us this value here. So if I head over to Kestra and now run that, we can actually see here when it runs, we'll be able to see the outputs appear in here once it has executed. Um, there we go, vars.downloads. We can see the number there, much easier to work with. And we can also see in the logs that we've been able to pass it to the log message as well. Now you can take this one step further as well and you can actually uh, output files as well. So let's take that same example, but instead of outputting just a number, let's write that to a file and then hand that file over to Kestra. So I've got in here, same example, but I'm gonna write it to a file called downloads.txt. And then once it's done doing that, I'll be able to then access that because it will write it to the internal storage of Kestra. So if I then click execute, we can see that our Python file is going to run, but this one's going to be using the script plugin. Um, and then here I can see in outputs, our Python, uh, our new TXT file, I can preview it and see that that is the correct number of downloads. I can also download it too. So I've got that full flexibility to use Kestra to process data and then produce a file that I can then use myself. Uh, without needing to go and like get in the nitty gritty. And I can also see in the logs here that we use a shell command to be able to access the content of that file. And we can see that there as well. So super, super useful. Now we've also got this metrics tab here, which we can tap into too. If you wanna be able to time how long it takes or count how long things are taking in your Python code, you can do that too. And then pass that back to Kestra to view in this wonderful dashboard. So if we head over to flows and go over to Python metrics, I've got an example here that's very similar to our outputs one, but instead what we're going to do is uh, it's going to actually time it. So very simply with the Python import time, I can start get a little timer and then I can 
can get the end of our performance counter. And then I can just hand that over to the timer function of Kestra. I'm going to give it the key of duration. So it will come up in the platform as duration and simply just the start and end times subtracted from each other. Pretty straightforward. So let's go in here and execute this. So our code will be running exact same examples before it's going to start a docker image it's going to then make a request it's got our data this is the output and we can see the metrics and uh, if i head over to metrics we can see the duration was 0.33 seconds so really good if you're trying to work with more performance stuff or maybe wanting to spot issues where things are taking longer than they should have done um, to help you identify potential problems happening with your flows there is one last thing that I'm going to walk you through, which is using the execute function in the Kestra library. So let's say you've got an example where you've got Python, um, you've got a Python server running something in the background and you want it to trigger Kestra to then start, you know, executing a huge number of flows. Now we've got the execute function here, which is super powerful for enabling you to do that. Um, if you're running this though indirectly inside of Kestra, I would recommend you use a subflow where you can have Kestra cool a separate flow. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier and it's easier to visualize as well. So I'd recommend doing that. But if you are running a separate server and you want that to then trigger Kestra, then you can simply use this Python code here where uh, using the flow class, we can simply execute, hand it the namespace and the flow ID. We're going to go and use the first flow that we used at the start of this video, which was Python scripts. And simply when I run this, it will then just trigger that flow to run as well. Um, one last thing to note is you'll need to, if you're running this directly in Kestra, like I am, you're going to need to set the host name to be the Docker internal, otherwise it will error. Now let's just click execute and see that run. So this is going to, again, start up our Python file, uh, and then it's going to execute it. And as you can see here, it says successfully triggered the execution. Now, if we hit the execution, um, tab, we can actually see here that Python scripts did actually run, um, successfully as we would expect. So the Python library is really, really powerful and a really great way to be able to bring the power of your Python code into Kestra and give you that full flexibility. Uh, stay tuned for more how-to guides on how to get the most out of Kestra.